coolness is typically very much the opposite of disabled. I think legs and arms are like really different um, things to, to consider and with legs so much more computer power has to go on. Then it converts the electronic signals that my prosthesis picks up from my arm into electronic signals that the synthesizer will understand. So basically that feels like controlling the music with my thoughts. They feel like they're shaking hands with the future and it gets them really, really excited which I think is amazing. At the very, very beginning, I was wearing the complete opposite of these prosthetics. So incredibly realistic, high definition silicone. They had freckles, they had wrinkles, they had fingernails you could paint. The prosthesis that I used to wear were also this steel hook or maybe this kind of skin colored glove. And I always realized how that created awkwardness in social interaction. I always felt like these prosthetic arms were kind of designed to make other people around you feel comfortable. We did indeed find that prosthesis like this not only provide a functional benefit, but also a psychological one. People with physical disabilities who wear bionic prosthesis are not seen as incompetent as people with physical disabilities typically are. For me, when I was growing up and I was you know, a, a little girl in a hospital, I really felt that, you know, watching MTV and Disney and Hollywood movies for me was the thing that really made me feel that, you know, you should be able to take control of your body and you should be able to transform yourself in, in any way you want. Now where I wear these bionic arms, people see me in the street and they want to come up and they want to shake my hand. They feel like they're shaking hands with the future. There is no more pity, but there is a positively connotated interest. People go like, oh, wow, that's cool. Can you show me how that works? And I thought that was fascinating because coolness is typically very much the opposite of disabled. You know, how we carry the narrative of this post-disability, post-human um, idea is really important. We're now in a time where technological innovation has the potential to change stereotypes, to change how we see each other and to change how we interact with each other. And I think that's absolutely fascinating. I kind of feel like I've been programmed from a young age to think that it's not OK to show these differences and that you have to blend in. When we actually are asked about what we want, we all want cool superhero arms. You know what I mean? Over the past years, like I've had a, I've had a prosthetic that had the world's smallest Tesla coil in it. Um, ones that have lights, ones that have been turned into a musical instrument or a shape of a spike. And we all love a bit of sci-fi. And I feel like with my generation sat watching that still now at home, they're seeing, they're seeing this on their screen and it's labeled fantasy, right? But if they think that this fantasy can in fact become reality, then it definitely brings a lot more excitement around it. There's a lot of uncertainty about augmentation for able-bodied people. This future, not only of medical technology, but of augmentation, of course, security is vital. And these kind of connections require a, a level of security that I think we don't have yet in household consumables. My hand connects to an app on my mobile phone that is used to configure the hand and to remote operate some of the scripts. But of course, at the same time, the phone is connected to the internet. So in theory, this technology makes it possible for someone over the internet to hack my prosthesis. How your any of your personal data that is coming out, whether inside of your body, whether you're typing it, whether you're thinking it, you know, I do feel like there needs to be a, a universal kind of personal protection of some kind. The funny thing is like, if I look at new technology, I'm finding the same type of problems and same type of security issues as I did in the software, which is like 20 or, or 30 years old. People are concerned about fun, you know, usability and security often comes third or fourth. So uh, what typically happens again and again is that some, some new innovation happens, everyone goes into it with great enthusiasm, and then the smart security guys come in the end and say, hey guys, you know, you need to care about these things. I've had some conversations about, you know, uh, getting some implants put in, in my leg that would essentially control bionic ankle. And, you know, the implications of security are, are pretty high, pretty much.